It's time to be about that life, the startup life. Here's your host, Dominic Lawson. All right, Startup Nation, so I hope you're ready to receive some value today. My name is Dominic Lawson, and this is The Startup Life, the show for entrepreneurs and career-minded professionals. You know, Startup Nation, I know a lot of us aren't traveling nearly as much uh, as we use as we have been before. Uh, you know, 2020 kind of put a damper on that whole deal. Uh, but, you know, there are still some great brands uh, that kind of cater to, you know, your travel enthusiasts, you know, especially the ones who are my minimalists, minimalists out there. I'm pretty sure I kind of fit into that mold as well. So that's why I wanted to introduce you to my guy, Dim Dims, Dan Dimsky, uh, the co-founder of Unbound Moreno. Big Dan, what's up, boss? Hey, how are you? I'm good. Yourself? Uh, living the dream, living a dream. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We really appreciate it. And before we kind of dive into the company and stuff like that, I know we're on the other side of, of 2020 and stuff like that, but just kind of, you know, describe your experience with, uh, you know, how life has been, you know, kind of going through COVID and, and all the other stuff. Kind of talk about, about 2020 a little bit in your eyes. Well, if anything, like everyone, I think, uh, I got slapped hard in the face with uh, all the things that maybe I took for granted, mm, you know, gotcha. the little things, the big things. Um, one thing that, you know, that's maybe unique to us and not, I mean, not, we're not alone in this. There's a lot of people, but in our business situation is we were, we're an apparel brand, but we were largely positioned as a, a travel apparel brand. Right. Right. The clothing helps you pack lighter so that you can experience more. That was something that was a slogan of ours on our website. That was a, an ethos of ours. Right. And it's something that still works for us. But, you know, one thing we took for granted is the traveling itself, mm. you know, and when no one, I mean, I mean, you, you'd have to be really on the fringe to think the entire travel industry was going to grind to a halt. Just like if you were in the restaurant business and you had a busy restaurant, you'd be uh, on the fringe to think the entire restaurant industry would grind almost to a halt. Exactly. You know, so this was something I took for granted, but we, we had a few very good years of being a, 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 an apparel brand that was focused on the travel niche. Mm. Now you can wear our clothing when you're not traveling. Of but course. we spent went really deep down a rabbit hole of building a brand around travel. And then we found ourselves scratching our heads in March and April of 2020. Like, you know, we we got really good at, at marketing this stuff. Right. We got good at Facebook ads. We got good at our, our copywriting on our website, you know, knowing that this this wording works better than that wording. And it was all geared towards travel. So everything that we worked so hard for was now no longer serving us. And, and, and we were really scared. We, it was scary. You know, right. we had this fast growing company that out of nowhere was, you know, we, we were used to at least a hundred percent growth from the previous year, any, in any given month, mm. at least a hundred percent growth. And that was for years. So we were right. growing rapidly. Right. Then all of a sudden we, we declining in sales. Like we were, they're smaller than they've ever been. And it was, what, what do we do? So, uh, we spent the better part of the year reestablishing who, who are we and where do we fit in? Uh, is the world going to change forever? Right. Do we have to make temporary changes? Do we have to make permanent changes? But one thing it did was it, uh, it did that, that, that fear, that anxiety that we had, it, you know, you could cower or you could roll up your sleeves and figure it out. And that's kind of our attitude. So we, we, we created these war room sessions where we would roll up our sleeves and figure out how, what are we going to do? And, and coming out of it, I think that we're a much stronger business. We're doing a lot of things we could have been doing all along mm. that are, you know, right. making us a healthy business. And then we're, we've landed on our feet nicely in, in this new, in this new normal. For sure. For sure. You know, and, and I'm, thank you for sharing it. And I'm glad you pointed out some of the things that you said, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, and, and a lot of people came on the show and said this, you know, a lot of times when you have uh, adversity or adverse uh, situations or time periods for that matter, it really does reveal uh, some things that you could be doing uh, uh, differently uh, in your business. Uh, but also it allows you to kind of like refocus a little bit. So I appreciate all that, uh, Dan, for sure, man. Thank you. No worries. No worries. So kind of walk us through Unbound Moreno, man. You know, it's a wonderful brand startup nation. And if you want to check it out, go to unboundmoreno.com. Uh, that's uh, U-N-B-O-U-N-D-M-E 
R I N O uh, dot com. It's an E, not an A, for my longtime Dolphin fan. So uh, once again, you can check out that brand. Uh, at uh, unboundmarino.com. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access if you're listening to the replay on the podcast. So kind of walk us through the brand, man. Like you have fantastic clothes that look great on everybody, but you know, you have some unique features about it. So kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, it all it all started with my own desire to travel and pack very, very light. Gotcha. You know, I've had experiences um, where I, I you bring a big suitcase and you travel overseas and then you find yourself hauling like a heavy bag. You, if you're, if you're going to multiple cities, uh, it's it just becomes a real pain. You right. know, you, you end up checking into an Airbnb or a hotel or a hostel or wherever you're staying. You open up your big suitcase, you unpack, you have your dirty clothes, you pack it into a, a plastic bag and stuff it in and then repack and schlep this thing around. And I I felt like there has to be a better way. So I started Googling like how, you know, I was going on a trip to um, Thailand and China Mm -hmm. and I was going away for three weeks and and I'm like, I want to pack really light. So I started Googling, how do you travel overseas with just a carry on? Right. And I came across a Reddit post where this guy broke down how he packs to travel. He travels for like three, four months at a time and he all he, and all he ever needs is a care on never anything more. And one thing he said was one of the main things I do is I pack Merino wool t-shirts. Now I never heard of Merino wool t-shirts before. Mm-hmm. In fact, it struck me as odd. I'm like, I did a wool t-shirt. Right. That sounds like it's going to be itchy. Right. And I thick. <laughs> said, no, this is it's Merino wool is super fine. It feels softer than cotton. And the thing about Merino wool that makes it special is it's antibacterial, antimicrobial, and odor resistant. Mm. So instead of packing 14 t-shirts because I'm going away for two weeks and and I might not be able to do laundry, I could pack two or three and I could rewear them. And even if I sweat bullets through them, they will not smell. Right. So if you can't find a washing machine, no worry. It's totally fine to wear them multiple days in a row. It would, it's, it's completely sanitary and you'll be fine. So I'm like, that sounds very interesting. So I went on looking for Merino wool t-shirts and I found them, but you know, I, I had a problem with what I was finding. They were a lot of them. Well, almost everything I found was positioned and made for the purpose of outdoors or active wear. So, gotcha. and the clothing looked that way. So, you know, you, you had reflective logos. It had athletic cuts to it. Uh, it looked like something that you'd go for, a, you know, portaging with a canoe in or going for running a triathlon, riding a bike or running or whatever. Gotcha. It didn't look like something that you would want to wear when you go out to a cocktail bar or to a cafe. Like, you know, it's it, it just looked like active wear. And I remember I ended up going on a vacation and I was at it. I ended up buying this stuff. Now here's the thing. This stuff performed as promise. I fell in love with Merino wool. I thought this material is like, it's like a miracle fabric. I love it. But I remember looking at a picture of me in this nice cocktail bar in Hong Kong. And I thought, you know, I remember that bar and I kind of remember feeling like awkward being there because I was wearing this shirt with this reflection. Like I looked like I should be out for a jog, but I was in this nice cocktail bar. Right. Why is it so hard to find a shirt that's like a nice black crew neck or V-neck t-shirt? I could wear a nice pair of pants, a pair of white, and not feel good at a cocktail bar. Mm -hmm. Why is no one doing this? And that's when I had this moment where I'm like, well, I want it to exist. Why don't I just go make it? You know, I was looking for an idea. I wanted to create an e-commerce product business, but I had no idea what it would be. And then all of a sudden it hit me. I'm like, I was looking so hard for this and no one does it the way that I want. So why don't I just go and do it? Right. And I, I, it was a terrible time for me to start a business. You know, I didn't have any money to do it. I didn't have any energy. I had another business I was running that consumed all my time and energy. I wasn't happy there. So we did a crowdfunding campaign and to see if people would be into this idea. Mm -hmm. And we tried to sell $30,000 in pre-orders. And in the first two months we sold 400,000. Wow. And I guess it was the idea, like the thing that I was looking for, we went and created, you know, there was, that was the, I think the key insight that I realized is there was that gap in the marketplace. Like no one was doing it. So why don't we do it? So right. the, since then, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people around the world have bought our stuff. We've helped people pack light and travel. And now we're, you know, it's not for travel anymore, but 
we've acquired customers all over the world and people love our stuff and they're it's changing the way they view their clothing is maybe stepping a little bit away from the consumable fast fashion, but having something that's a little bit more eco-conscious, uh, a little more comfortable, high performance, great clothing. So that's what we are. Gotcha. In a long ramble, you not chill. Gotcha. No, I, I appreciate that. And, you know, I think one of the things I think a lot of people, you know, for the, you know, I know it's not just for people who travel and stuff like that, but for those who do, and I think you kind of hit on this a little bit, you know, I think uh, people appreciate that, like the part where it, you know, it doesn't smell and stuff like that. Like it allows you to travel longer because now you're not looking for like a washing machine or something to kind of, you know, keep the trip going. And so you can enjoy more of your trip. So uh, that's definitely right. something. And you, yeah, go and ahead, you know sorry. what? You, you talked about minimalists before. We ha- we really, uh, people who sort of uh, uh, subscribe to that minimalist lifestyle love yeah. our stuff because not just for travel, but for having less stuff, period, Facts. you know, less yeah. of a overflowing dresser or closet. There are people who buy a few of our t-shirts and they run their washing machine less because, you know, they're consuming less energy. They don't need mm, like you right. kind of think of it like jeans. Like if you wear a pair of jeans, you go yep. out when you come home, you don't throw it into the hamper to wash it. Like you, you have a few wears out of a pair of jeans. Right. You kind of wash them if you get them dirty or if it's just been enough time, you know, right. you feel it's time to wash them. So people treat our t-shirts in a similar way. It's like, I don't need to wash it every time. So I could be a little bit more environmental, consume a little less energy, have less stuff, have less, you know, less overflowing stuff into my closet and all that stuff. And it's just a simpler, less cluttered way of living. For sure. For sure. Thank you uh, for sharing that. I want to ask you this because I know you guys you know, are, are really big on the e-commerce side of the business and stuff like that. And, and given everything that's going on now, you know, I know e-commerce has been really big, you know, in, in 2020, you know, even leading up to 2020, uh, but 2020 really put a stamp on like how, you know, kind of pushed that envelope even more. Uh, but I'm curious about something like, you know, do you think not, not that it'll completely go away, but when you think about the brick and mortar retail store, uh, do you think that a lot of those companies and brands have to rethink their strategy a lot? I know some of them are, and some of them are like, no, nah, we're just we're just going to wait this out. You know, what's your take on the whole e-commerce, you know, structure and how people using e-commerce to kind of expand their business or not expand their businesses? Well, so we made the choice that we're going to be entirely e-commerce. Right, we made that right. choice for a number of reasons. Um, there is definitely a need for in-person retail. Uh, but if you are completely against e if, if that's your only model right now, you're, you're definitely in big trouble right now, right. for sure. Uh, I think I think the retailers are working very hard to understand where they fit into the e-commerce world if they don't already have that figured out. Mm-hmm. That's a lifeline for all. I mean, that's been our lifeline where we survived and thrived through this because we were an e-commerce focused company. If we were a brick and mortar retailer and we didn't have a good e-commerce presence, we'd probably have it by now mm-hmm. because we would need it. But I think in the future, I don't think it's going to be um, one or the other. I right. think I think it's going to be everything, you know, mm-hmm. and I think that you can survive on either or in a no- normal world. But e-commerce is is undeniably a lifeline for any business right now because it's the only way to shop. And I think it's not going to, I think more people are going to start to go back to regular retail, but we jumped ahead 10 years on the, the, the traffic flow of e-commerce retail. Right. So uh, e-commerce is going nowhere. Retail is going nowhere, but I think, you know, the most successful big brands that are like brick and mortar retailers will have a really, really sound strategy that combines both. Right. Yeah. I think one of the things we always try to preach on this show is balance. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, being on too far, far in on one spectrum or the other as a whole, as an industry or whatever, you know, is something that, you know, uh, it could be, you know, something not so good, not so good at all. So I appreciate uh, you sharing all of that for sure. Once again, Startup Nation, we're talking to Dan uh, Dembski, the co-founder of Unbound Marino. And if you want to check out that brand, Startup Nation, we have a link there in the show notes for easy access if you're listening to the replay on the podcast. So, you know, speaking of which, you, we, we mentioned that you're a co-founder, which means you have other co-founders with a longtime friends of yours. Kind of talk about, you know, doing business with your friends and how you guys kind of work together and build the company. Well, when we were in our twenties, so we, I, I've been sort of an entrepreneur my entire like 
professional career. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've had jobs throughout all my teenage years and young adult years, but I never went and had a corporate job. I I sort of, I sort of just started a business with my best friends. Right. We did that. It was a, it was a combination of being productive and having fun. Like it's, you know, we could go out and go to bars and drink beers together, or we can go to bars and drink beers together with some laptops and like, work on a little project together. And that's sort of always been our, our, our lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And we spun out a business um, in our early twenties that was pretty successful. And we had just a blast doing it. And, and, it, was, and it was successful for years, but I, at a certain point I hated doing it. Um, I just got very tired of being in the type of business I was in, which was a video production agency. So we decided as a group of friends to come up with an idea of building out an e-commerce business and we, we we took years so this is way before the idea of unbound it wasn't like we had the idea let's work on this right we decided earlier on at, for fun why don't we get together and try to think of a product we can sell online so we used to have these brainstorm sessions where we'd we'd come up with some terrible ideas some good ideas that we just didn't run with maybe good ideas who knows um but we had this intent of building something and it was a fun thing to do, but we, we were doing it as friends. We're doing it with, you know, having a few beers, ordering a pizza, hanging out, you know, it was not a lot of pressure. It was just for fun. And when this idea came, I was doing, obviously it turned to my best friends. Uh, I think there's a, a lot of people who say working with your best, your friends is not a good idea. Business and friendship don't mix. Mm -hmm. We really think it mix, it mixes very well. And, it depends on the nature of your friendship. You know, if you have each other's best interests at heart, you're not competing with each other. It's not about one upmanship. It's not about anyone being the star of the show. Mm -hmm. It's really about everyone growing together and everyone growing individually and supporting each other. Right. Um, Being friends is actually a huge advantage because while you should as friends have each other's best interests at heart, you also could be pretty damn candid with each other. Mm, okay. You know, you could, we could fight with each other. You could be really upset with each other. You don't have, there's no politics. There's no, I don't, I, I want to say this, but I don't want to offend them. Uh, you know, this is my superior or my inferior. They're reporting. There's no drama. There's no politics. It's just like, are you stupid? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I could say that to them and right. they know that I'm saying that out of love, you know? So there's a certain level of candor and brashness that comes with being friends that you just can't do when you don't know these people and how they'll respond to something. So, uh, and then when this business started to grow and we're seeing success, it's like, you know, we all went together to visit suppliers. We go on trips together to, to, uh, you know, make new connections, meet new suppliers, things like that. And at the end of the day, I'm like out having beers and having dinner with my best friends. And then I look at my life and think, this is a gift. If you can make it work, it's a gift. So in my opinion, business and friendship mix. And if you could ever be so lucky as to work with your friends or family, you are very, very lucky and you should be able to make it work. I love doing it. All right, Startup Nation. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We got to pay some bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson and you're listening to The Startup Life. episode of the startup life is powered by colony spark startup nation with our economy in flux there is a lot of mixed messaging out there if there was ever a time to take control of the narrative and let your customers know that you're here to serve them it's now and that's why you have a friend in colony spark colony spark is an omni-channel marketing agency that believes in the power of community to ignite your business they have helped companies across many industries with lead generation revenue growth and more to put them on the path to success My guy Bill Murphy and his team are very good at what they do. How do I know this? Because not many SEO companies have the stamp of approval of being partnered with Google. Yes, that Google. 
So I want you to go to www.colonyspark.com forward slash startup to schedule a meeting today. In that meeting, you will review your current marketing activity, receive actionable advice on how to pivot and grow, and ask any marketing questions you may have on navigating over the next few months. Look, Startup Nation, I know things may seem uncertain right now, but if you are looking for a business partner that can help light the way, go with Colony Spark, where they firmly believe in business helping business. All right, Startup Nation, welcome back as we continue our conversation with today's guest here on The Startup Life. Gotcha. I appreciate that. I was going to ask, you know, how you guys like handle disagreements and stuff like that, but you kind of got into that. So I, I appreciate uh, you sharing that. I, I want to ask you something. I want to go to your website really quickly. Once again, Startup Nation, that website is unboundmoreno.com uh, and you have Unbound Rewards. And I'm always curious about how companies and brands come up with like reward programs for customers kind of talk about the unbound rewards program you have there okay so that's it's an interesting question because we've been talking about it a lot lately mm -hmm. uh, so we're our store is on the shopify platform right. shopify makes a lot of things like a, adding a rewards program quite easy you know so we found a, a rewards program that looked good to us we did our, our research mm -hmm. And we built it out originally by looking at what their best practices are and making some minor tweaks to what the best practices for the rewards program. So right. building right. out the rewards program was quite easy. And that's like the nature of starting an e-commerce business today. Like to, to conceive and execute a rewards program 10 years ago would have been a, a, an enormous thought process and an investment. Right. It was so, so easy to the point where – we had it going. People were collecting rewards points. They were getting rewards. And then this was literally three, four days ago. I started noticing our website was just flooded with, you know, I could see if, if I go into a live view, I can see how many people are checking out, how many people have active carts and how many people just purchased within the last 10 minutes. Right. And there was an unusual amount of people that were checking out. Like, like something happened. There was some kind of press hit. And I started seeing all these orders come in. Mm -hmm. And they're all for zero dollars. And like, what is going on? So I started noticing all these people were buying one pair of socks and they all had a $20 code. So a bunch of people learned how to hack a rewards program mm -hmm. and it was reported somewhere. So, you know, we've had to make adjustments so that it's like, you can't just do these three things and you just get, you know, we'll send you free stuff. Like we right. had to tweak it so that we're actually getting people who are, potentially fans of the product that are buying our stuff because they like it, but then getting rewarded for doing it, not just getting a free reward because they found it on some deal site. Right. Uh, right. The, the whole idea of it is we have a lot of customers who have ordered many, many times and it just feel like they should be able to achieve something, you know, get a gift from us. Right. The, the, the funny thing about a rewards program is they're so easy to install that we kind of, it was just like plug and play and go. So the rewards thing right now, we're in the process of figuring out exactly what we want to do, but really all it is, is like, and most businesses that are running a rewards program right now, they've installed something. If you're a loyal customer, you'll get rewards for it. And it's pretty plug and play and automated. I think in, in the future, what we need to do is put more thought into making it something that feels more custom to what our business is. But really, all it is, is you buy stuff, you get points, and the more points you get, you can redeem some more stuff for it. So the people who really do love our stuff and buy it a lot, they end up getting, you know, they get a free t-shirt, a free sweater after a few purchases and stuff gotcha. like that. Gotcha. You know, and I appreciate your transparency there, Dan. You know, you shared that, that, that adverse situation you know, uh, in your company, because sometimes you try stuff out and sometimes you have somebody who unfortunately want to take advantage of your niceness, right. And take advantage. Well, of look at this. You know what? We, we talked so. about it. We said, do we, what do we do? Do we cancel these orders now? Right. Because these people, they might not, they, they're just like, you know, they just want free stuff. Of course. That's like the, at least the impression. Right. But we're like, Oh, but, but you know what? They played by the rules. Mm. Like they didn't cheat us. Right. That was our own program. Gotcha. So what they did is they went on, they shared to Facebook, you know, they did all this stuff that's really promoting our brand. So like Fair enough. they earned a pair of socks. So we changed the program so it's not you can't just go and get something without having ever bought anything. 
right? So we changed right. it now because otherwise we'd have to just be sending free socks all over the world forever. <laughs> but there was, I think, 40 people that, that ended up. We canceled the program. So we found it like I saw it like while it was happening. But 40 people got through, got a free pair of socks. We said they earned it. So we're going to send it to them. And you know what? Our socks are awesome. So they're going to try it. They did their work. They could try our socks. Hopefully they love them. Hopefully they'll become customers. But if not, they, you know, they shared our thing on Facebook. They sh- sent uh, our web link as a, an email. They did all this stuff that maybe helped promote us. They, they did the work. I hear but that. We just had a, a kind of faulty rewards program. I hear that. I hear that. And I, and I appreciate you turning that negative into a positive. So I, I definitely understand that. Definitely understand that. I appreciate that. Let me ask you this, man, because, you know, also, you know, your, your website and even like the, the kind of the minimus, minimal, 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 list. I'm sorry, I can't talk right. Uh, uh, kind of aspect to the company or whatever, you know, talk about the culture, you know, uh, you know, you, you guys and the people that you have there and stuff like that kind of talk about the culture of the company. It, it does it kind of match that minimalist kind of brand. Cause I'm looking at the website here and it's kind of has that vibe. And I mean that in a completely flattering way, you know, cause you know, look, you see a lot of websites sometimes like, man, it's a lot going on. And <laughs> which means yeah. it's a, it's kind of hard to understand. So kind of talk about that company culture a little bit. So we, we really try to figure out what our core values are as a company. Yeah. We spent once every three months, we have a, a quarterly planning meeting and we spend the first maybe hour talking about what our core values are. And these are not aspirational core values, like always work hard or whatever. Like, it's like what right. we try to do is really, really honestly reflect on who we are and how we operate the company. Mm-hmm really reflect who but not just in like what we think we are want to be but real stuff like what we've really seen in ourselves and unearth the core values not create them as this vision but this is how we already act and the one and they evolved over the years but the one core value that has been there from the beginning and it stays is less but better Mm. that's in everything we do so if you notice so we don't have a lot of skews like a lot of items in our store right we have crew round neck t-shirts crew neck t-shirts v-neck t-shirts hoodie button down shirts, very basic stuff in a few colors and we're not trying to, we don't have anything that's like too seasonal like we had like winter beanies um that's a seasonal product but we have very few seasonal products um from our product line the less but better is an obvious thing about what we are as a brand, but that permeates into everything we do. Like our business model. I said, we don't do any retail. We're all e-commerce because Mm -hmm. it's like less, but better. Why try to be everywhere? Let's just do a better job focusing on less. It's better for us because there's less relationships to manage. It's higher margin. We get to have a direct communication with our customers. It's simpler. It's cleaner. It's better. And it's less to focus. So, and, 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 you know, one of the inspirations for that, it was uh, looking at Apple, you know, and Apple was working on, and we're not not in any stretch thing. We're going to be some kind of like global dominating brand like that, but just the, right. what Apple did better than, you know, a lot of these PC brands was they just focused their energies one thing at a time. You know, when the iPod came out, that was what Apple was working on. They weren't doing iPod, iPhone. I, it's like, one thing at a time. The iMac came out in its time. The iPhone came out in its time. The Apple Watch came out in its time. And the company has this this like singular focus on something. And we really try to embody less but better. Focus on less, be less, own less, you know, everything. Mm-hmm. And that permeates from the product to our business model to the way we think. And uh I would say that's the strongest core value attribute of our company. And it's been just awesome for us because really it's like, it's so easy to get so overwhelmed with all the minutia of trying to be everywhere, trying to do all these things. I got, I got an email recently. Um, and this might be a wonderful idea. It's a customer of ours and he loves our stuff and he's a soccer referee. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about how the soccer referees need to wear a very specific type of sock. Mm. Um, it has it's a black sock that goes certain height and it has a white stripe on it or two white stripes it has the white stripes have to be the exact spot so there's a regulation soccer referee socks or something like that and 
he said the socks that they have access to, there's a couple companies that make them, are horrible. They're made of the synthetic material. They're very uncomfortable to wear. Your, they make your feet stinky. And like he wears our socks. He's like, man, I wish that these were the soccer referee socks for when I was doing when I'm refing games right. because because these socks are so much better than the, the the ones I have to wear. So he said, if you made these, this could be an enormous opportunity because every soccer referee under the sun is going to want to do it. And while I thought hmm, that might be a great idea, and I have an in of information here, mm-hmm. I don't play soccer, or I surely don't ref soccer, right? And it's just like, if I put energy into this idea, all I'm doing is I'm taking my mind away from being better on the singular focuses that we do have as a company. Right. We are, we're focusing on a couple products this year that are very, very important to our growth. I can't be sidetracked by, by um, soccer referee socks, although that might really, that might be a really, really good idea. So this is like, again, you look at our website, you say in a good way, you see minimalism, Mm -hmm. our Mm -hmm. business model, we try to have that same sort of ethos through everything. I hear that. And I think the best brands, you know, they do that throughout, whether it be through the customer internally, all of the above and then the business model. So I, I appreciate you sharing that, you know, and also appreciate that, like, you know, sometimes. You know, even if opportunity is there, you know, if it goes against the core of the brand, maybe it's not a, you know, a good idea to kind of pursue it or maybe not pursue it at that moment. You know what I mean? So I, I definitely yeah. appreciate that transparency. Go ahead, man. And, and also, it's just like not exciting to me. Right. You know, Fair like enough. I'm excited about the stuff that I care to have. Like that, that's, a, that's something I'm, I, I, I'm lucky to be in my position for is mm-hmm. I truly fit the core demographic of this brand. Right. Like I originally, the idea came from my own need. So I relate to our customers. So the marketing and all that stuff is very ex- easy. It comes to us naturally and it's exciting to me and it's exciting to my business partners. Right. We're excited by this, but I wouldn't be excited about making soccer ref socks. I could, even if it was something that like, this is a potential, you know, we, a million dollars a year in revenue. It's like, I'd be hard pressed to add that to our full, because I'm like, I don't want to get into like, I, don't, I wouldn't even know how to talk to the soccer audience. Right. So it created all this complexity. So it's like, there's something to be said about like being excited and, and, uh, and having an understanding of the markets in which you play. I understand. I understand. And you know, some, you said earlier as well, one of a highlight startup nation is that, you know, you were talking about, you know, looking at how Apple kind of did things, you know, to kind of, uh, compete with the PC. And it just goes to show that like big brands like that are, are not only successful, but they're also dropping clues on things that you can probably pick up and adapt uh, in your own business. So I appreciate that nugget as well, Dan. Yeah, for sure. Once again, Startup Nation, we're actually wrapping up with Dan uh, Dembski, Dembski, co-founder of Unbound Marino. And if, once again, if you want to check out the brand, go to unboundmarino.com. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access if you listen to the replay on the podcast man let me ask you this man what's that one determining factor you think uh that you've had all these years you talked about earlier about kind of being an entrepreneur for quite a while now you know what's that what's that competitive advantage you think you have when it comes to building a great business like unbound marino and others this is going to sound fluffy it might even be a little fluffy but honestly i've always just had this belief gotcha. now i'm not some exceptionally smart I'm, I'm a smart person i'm clever mm-hmm. i'm not uh, i'm not some genius okay gotcha. i'm an you know i i meet people smarter than me every day um i don't come from money uh i don't i have you know i have some privilege but i it's, I, I i didn't come into this world with a silver spoon in my mouth or like a brain that's unusually gifted or anything i'm just like your regular guy i had to do work really hard and start with nothing. But one thing I had, and this is a gift that was given to me is Mm -hmm. at least the belief and confidence. And there's a few people in my childhood that just made me feel good about myself. You know, if you don't feel good about yourself, find a way to feel good because you, that's really it. You know, like, I I mean, I, I, I already started a business that was going pretty well. I told you about the video production. But when I wanted to create unbound, I was at a point where, We made some business mistakes that were costly. You know, I was making more money, you know, years before personally and in the business. Uh, I was struggling. I didn't like the work. It was 
I was overworked. If you look at pictures of me from a few years ago, you could see in my face, I was just like mm. a lot more tired looking and a lot less happy looking. Um, I was just drained. I had no money. I had no energy. I had this other business to run, no time. But I felt like I want to create a, an e-commerce business because I like the business model more. But what I, ha- I still had through all of this was just belief. I can go and do it. I've already created a business. I had thought the first time. Maybe I was young and naive and I lived in my mom's place. So I, I didn't have any bills and stuff to pay, but right. I just believed I could do it. And then when I, odds are all against me, I'm like, I believe I can create an e-commerce business. Like you have to believe and don't let any, like, honestly, the like, doubt is not just a, it, it's like a real curse. Mm-hmm. And one, someone once taught me in my twenties, they, they, you know, he, he's a little bit diabolical and he's a little bit of a, he's very successful now, but he's a little crazy. <laughs> but he, he, one thing he lived by was never show doubts. Mm-hmm. And sometimes he was crazy about this. Cause like he, he must have had, had doubts sometimes in his head, but never show them, never show doubts. And that was made him a good leader. He's always, I was bold. And I think he convinced himself to not have doubts about things when you believe in your own convictions and believe in it strongly. So that sort of rubbed off on me. I try not to show doubts about things. Like we could do this. We could. And, and that's sometimes enough. Right. I said to because while I have co-founders, um, they're so instrumental in the success of this. I was the one that went to them and said, here's the idea. I want us to do this. We could do this. This could be a real business. And I think my confidence and my belief in that was attractive to them. That are like, you know what? Like, I don't, they didn't believe, like, I'll I'll tell you a story. One of my co-founders, when we had our crowdfunding campaign Mm -hmm. and we made $400,000 in pre-orders in the first two months, that was enough to like buy a ton of inventory, start the whole operation. That was enough operating to start this whole thing. He looked at me and said, you know, I thought maybe we could get this thing funded, like 30, 40, maybe $50,000. I never thought something like this was possible. Right. And I look, and I, and, and I stopped in my tracks and I said to him, you didn't, you didn't think that it's like, he's like, I'm like, did you, you thought it would get funded? He's like, I thought maybe we could get funded. Maybe mm-hmm. like, and that was for 30,000. And I said, so why did you even do this? Right. And he's like, I don't know. It was fun. It was something to do. I got to have pizza and beer with my friend. Right? I told you we're friends, <laughs> right. right? Exactly. But it was shocking to me that like he didn't like it wasn't about like believing in it. But he, you know, it was my belief that said, okay, well, whatever. I could give us a shot. I have nothing else to do. But some people, like if he didn't have me to believe in this, he wouldn't go and do this because he didn't be- have enough belief in himself, right, to go and do it. Like he, be- he believed in me. Right. He believed that we'd have some fun, right. so he did it. But so you, that that's the difference between him and I. And he and he thanks me for this. I thank him because without him, it wouldn't have worked because his contributions made this happen. But he would not have done it without me. So I think get rid of the doubts in your head. They they have no place in your life. Try things out. The worst thing that can happen is the thing doesn't work, and you learn a ton. But really believe you could do things. The people who I've seen become the most successful have this just certainty that I could, I could, I could do this. I could do this. So there's a bit of fluff to that, but I, without belief, you have nothing. I heard that. I heard that. Thank you so much. And that's awesome stuff. And that's going to wrap up this session of the startup life. Once again, we want to thank Dan Dembski of unbound Marino for coming on the show. Thank you so much, boss. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate being here and hopefully we can connect soon. Sounds good. And as always, Startup Nation, if you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic, or would like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a great way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is there in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or even on your Facebook timeline or any other platform you like to get your podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. You can also listen to the show on the Startup Life Podcast new website. There you will find the all-new startup blog where I write on many topics that are interesting and helpful to you on your path to entrepreneurship. 
And hey, if you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.